Hi, I'm Shine Tusi, and this is a workflow slash show and tell for this island shot I did inside of Vera for Nuke. Um, I'm breaking up these videos to three parts to lay out shader assigning materials and rendering on how I was able to accomplish this island shot all rendered, look dev inside of Nuke with Vera. So the first part is going to be layout and lighting, and I'm just going to break down the script into small sections so I can clearly explain how it was done and some tricks and tips for other users if they want to use Nuke with V-Ray. So uh, here's my Nuke script and in this section here I have a very simple setup of, a sh of the photogrammetry for this island being let inside of Nuke with V-Ray. So what I'm going to do is, uh, unlike in events, I'm going to sit down and break down exactly what I'm doing in the script and certain reasons why I'm using uh, a V-Ray proxy over read geometry and the kind of lifestyle I'm using. So I'm going to just start from the top. Now here, what you notice that I got my photogrammetry and the layout model. So I'm just going to double click on the switch node and just switch it so you can see there's the layout geometry. And there's a photogrammetry. So what I tend to do is I use a node called V-Ray Proxy and I load the photogrammetry and my scene geometry through that. And here is the reason why. Um, any renderer that you get inside of Nuke will require to do something called a translation. Now what that means is that it will translate the Nuke scene into a V-Ray scene, render it and cache it and bring it back into Nuke. What V-Ray Proxy does is that it diverts the translation process and goes directly into the renderer. So what this means is that I can load really big geometries uh, from 600 megabytes to 40 gigabytes and render them all inside of Nuke. After that, obviously, I got some basic objects. So what this does is if I do a switch again, here I'm just using the photogrammetry to hold out the model. Then there's a card on the floor that holds out for the C. After this, I'm using two lights. I'm using one very, very light ambient and a direct light. So this is a native light in Nuke. So what I'm going to do is just disable that and just look at the ambient light. So the ambient light is just what it says is the ambient light just gives a flat color. But what's a nice thing with the ambient light, it supports the texture input. Now this texture input is referring to a procedural texture, which in this case is a V-Ray dirt map. And a V-Ray dirt map, it's uh, basically ambient occlusion. So it allows for multiple ambient occlusion styles. So you can either do a reflection fong, bling, or ward. There's no GGX, but I don't really see the reason for it the need for it to be honest so you have the ambient here and you can set your ambient color the radius and different kind of subdivisions here i've only set it to four but we notice there isn't really any noticeable difference if it is even goes to eight let's kill that so this is giving me my soft light and then what i'm doing is i'm using a direct light as our source for this key light from the sun now then, after that, we just got our camera with a basic view render. Now if I double click here, we'll see that I just got minimum shader 2, no anti-aliasing, and straight out of the box, I'm getting a fairly clean render. So let's kill this, and let's look at lighting within Nuke. So traditional workflow is what most people would do. They would either split the screen into a 3D and a 2D space and try to work that way but I'm not a big fan of that. So what I'm gonna do is show you a couple of techniques into lighting inside of Nuke. Uh, the first one is obviously, you, this is the one thing that you'll be doing, but if I switch to the 3D space and click W, right, I'll get the 3D space and the 2D space at the same time. So then here, what I can do is I can just rotate this light, give Nuke some time, and it will just automatically update it. And also the other things that I can do is I can go ahead and just, oops, if I click W, just jump here, sample that light. I can come here and quickly grade the lighting to make sure it works fine or if it matches the scene. In this case, I probably wanna bring the intensity quite high and maybe just desaturate this a little bit. But the color of the line is not really that important right now. What I'm really interested in, 
if I go back to photogrammetry, is that I want to match the contact shadows of this for of the, our lighting to the scan. So this is where it becomes a little bit tricky. And so this is what I've done here so far is I've set an axis to the center of the world. And now, right now, this other axis is looking at it. So I've got a kind of a sun system working. Then what I'll need to keep doing is just keep jumping back and forward between the 2D and the 3D space and try to find the sweet spot on my light. So you can already see that this is becoming a little bit painful. So for example, if this is, was your starting point, you know, it's gonna take you ages to go around and then you go a bit up, all right, maybe that's close, you compare, that's not quite right. And then you go back and forward, back and forward. So the, for me, this is a bit of a time consuming method. And what's really great with working with Nuke and lighting in Nuke are the fact that you can translate 2D information into 3D. So like in Nuke, <clears throat> in V-Ray, you have the option to create uh, AOV passes. Now, naturally you would expect for these AOV passes to be inside a render node, but they're not. You need to create a particular set of node code of VA render element, which is one here, for example. And here I can go ahead and click normals. And if I just collect it to my scene, I'll get a new render here. If I look at it, I'll get a new normals pass for my render. And that kind of resolves my issue. So what can we do with this kind of data and how does it really translate into lighting? Now for this, I've already set up a little gizmo for myself that makes my life a lot easier. So what I'm gonna do is just scroll a bit to the right and show this little tool here. So if I go ahead and clear everything and clear the cache, so we know we're not cheating. So what I went ahead and done is I pre-rendered my P world and my N world information and I put it inside of this gizmo and I've got two curve analyze tools that are analyzing the P world and N world information. And I'm using this little node here, this little axis node to say to my um, render and my lights that what I want to do is that, look, I got my lights over here, right? I want you to create an axis on this point instead of geometry and use the normals as an anchor to point a light to that face. So if I click on analyze and look at my render now, what it's done is just automatically paste, place the light relative to that geometry and created a cache shadow there. Now, obviously it's not quite working is because I got an offset controller there. If I hit that to zero, so this is the kind of light it generates. And I can use that point in 3D space as an anchor point to quickly match my lighting. And as we're inside of Nuke, I can hit W and I can just feather it between that, zoom here, and just quickly go ahead and match my lighting. So if I just go back and forth between that, I've got a pretty good lineup. So probably one thing you're wondering is like, hey, Shine, how do I soften these lights? Instead of direct light in the sample section, if I bring this up, you see it's kind of softened it. Now it's gonna be noisy. And to resolve that, you can either turn up the minimum shader rates to six, or you can go ahead and turn on anti-aliasing. And that's nice and clean. So this is great. I like to use this for creative lighting and you have some fun with that. But when it comes to the instance where you need your contact shadow to be exactly there and you want your hit spotlight to be exactly here, I've got a different set of tool. So uh, another one here is driven exactly the same as this node. What I'm going, basically what I'm doing here is I'm analyzing the P world only, but I've created two additional controllers, one for shadows and one for lights. And inside of this little gizmo, I'm just doing a basic axis and look at. So where I'm saying the lights is looking at the shadow. So now here, what I can do, because I think I actually already done this here, is that I can put my light there, double click on my gizmo, analyze, 
and click there, analyze, and I can just do a quick wipe across and just go ahead and make sure my shadows are working one to one. So another cool thing that you can do, so let's say for example, this is our lighting, let's just bring it up to two and let's just do a quick color sample of this color over here. And let's just bring this to three. So we got a nice strong uh, sunlight, let's just say. So another cool thing that you can do inside of Nuke, which is what I really like and enjoy working and lighting inside of Nuke, is that you can set up light blockers really quickly. So if compers are wondering what are the light blockers are, and I'll give you an example here. So what happens like right now, we get this consistent light, right? And if we compare here, we have like, you know, we have a strong key light, but it's feathering off there. It might be being included with some clouds and stuff, but we don't have the relative geometry to, to uh, do this. So to create a light blocker inside of Nuke is very, very easy. You just need an object that occludes the light and creates a soft fall off. Now to do that, I'm just gonna create a simple card and I'm just gonna scale this super big. And I'm going to create a trans geo, right? Connect it to the light, connect that to the axis, create a scene node, and just connect these two together. But ah, it's blocked everything, obviously, because it's very one right now. It's like there's a card I created, right? I'm going to go ahead and divide this by two, no, 100 or something. So right now this is like right on my light, so it's completely blocking all the lights. So what I can do is just bring this down. Okay, maybe we want to make this to 50. Okay. And then what I want to do is I can either plug in a texture. For example, I can plug in a noise pass. That's just a procedural regular nuke noise. I can do that, plug it in. And what I'm going to have is a bit of a breakup of my uh, lights that's created by this noise pass. So if I go ahead and make that bigger, you see you're gonna you gain different kind of variation. But obviously we're not getting a nice smooth look. And another problem we got is that we can see our light blocker. There it is. That's we don't want this in our render. So to get rid of this first, I'm gonna create a V-ray object prop. And I'm going to say primary visibility off, right? And I don't really need it to for the GI and stuff. Or well, maybe I do. Well, if someone wants to correct me, go ahead. But I do want to leave the cast shadow on. But again, another problem we have here is that it's kind of not giving us a good effect. It's fairly noisy. Now that noise can be easily cleaned up again with anti-aliasing. There you go. That's resolved that problem. And but we want more of a better control over this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that off and kill my noise. Obviously, it's gone back again to block, and I'm gonna create a rotor shape and plug that in. So, the first thing I want to tell people is that bear in mind that uh, VRA doesn't like bounding boxes, it will automatically for, like scale the image to that bounding box. So what you need to do is create a crop, say so crop to the full image. And actually what you notice here is that when I did that crop, you can actually see the crop in 3D as well. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna make this to 25, make it a bit smaller. Actually, I might even make it to 10. I feel like that's way too big. And here I'm just gonna create a quick circle. All right, and just there, and just do RGBA. And inside of the 3D space, I want to say, for example, like when I'm looking at this geometry, which we can't really see too well, but you can bring the OBJ files to view that. And we want to kind of control how much light blocking we want on this. So what we can do is look through, ah, oh, there you go, it works here for some reason. Well, anyway, so what I can do is here, I can either double click on that, grab the roto shape, scale down a bit and maybe just go ahead and feather it off. And if I look at my render now, you see we're starting to block that light over there. 
and now we're starting to soften this. So if I go ahead and just disconnect that, we are getting the exact kind of result we want. So we can control, like say for example, we can control how much light is there versus here, and we can do that with all this with roto shapes and just do a pretty good job of it. And then what we can also go ahead and further do is like break up that shape by again using a noise pattern and just on and, and pre-multiply with RGBA so we get a little bit more of a breakup with our light blocker and we can just gamma that up uh, remembering to probably put a clamp here i mean veer would automatically clamp it anyway but this is kind of like a bit of a pet peeve of mine so we can just go ahead and start refining this noise get the scale quite right and make sure our feather works very well so this is a really cool thing you can do with Vera, so with new code Vera, is that you can set up dynamic light blockers to really match your shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable that. And I don't only use this for doing light blocking to create dynamic lighting and stuff. I even use this to drive reflections. So in a recent show that I was working on, I had these vehicles traveling along the road. I had no scene geometry, no uh, HDRI reference. And all I was doing was just projecting bits from the plate, putting on a card as a texture, and just moving around in 3D space to create reflection, you know, reflector cards, you can also call it. So when the vehicles travel through the space, it will pick up the relative reflections. And I can actually, using similar tools like these, that PL and, uh, you know, the PL and the PLS tools, to place spot on reflections on exactly the spots I want. So I can control the microcontrol where I want the spec, I want to be relative to the geometry. 